My Halloween pick for October 2023 is Toby Hooper's The Fun House, 1981 movie, teen horror movie, and it's got some of the trappings of that kind of fare, Nightmare on Elm Street, and so on and so forth, but I actually really like this movie. I like it better than the internet does, which is rating this more lowly than I would. That's why I call it an underrated movie. The plot is just that teenagers are going to go into a carnival and they're going to have fun at this local town carnival. They decide to stay overnight in the fun house and make out, maybe have sex, maybe lose their virginity. But things go horribly wrong within the fun house. A bunch of real life crimes happen. They're witnesses to it and then they get involved in them. It's a very basic plot summary that I think is a tiny bit misleading and is not the way exact way I watch this movie. It's some kind of teen horror schlock thing although it kind of is and this is toby hooper who most people know from the texas chainsaw massacre but i watch this movie and i think it's more sophisticated than that i see this movie in the vein of one ray bradbury something wicked this way comes in particular to alfred hitchcock this movie is almost as if alfred hitchcock tried to make a teen horror thing and you get that in the opening where there's a point of view shot as the opening shot. It looks like some kind of killer is going to go into the bathroom and murder a young woman. You got this combination of sex, death, and horror, which is going to happen throughout the movie. And then obvious allusions to Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, but there's a twist, and the twist is the killer really, it, it's all fake and phony. It's it, the teenage girl's younger brother who's coming in and doing the, trying to scare her, which is one, perverted, because she's naked in the shower, but two, a goofy take on an absolutely terrifying horror movie and so the question is is this movie going to be just mere entertainment itself right using horror and death and sex and mixing them together for the purposes of audience titillation or is it going to be something more than that and i find that with the bradbury and hitchcock stuff i think it's something more than that it's a dark romantic capital r romantic kind of film in the vein of Poe and Hawthorne and other kinds of writers who used horror, or horror elements, and took them seriously as if they're, they transcend the entertainment that they are in. Things are not just mere entertainment. In the movie, the kids go to a carnival, and the carnival is using sex, death, and horror to entertain, to titillate, to make people enjoy you know, a, a night out, and it's an escapism. But... Death is not escapism. Horror and crime and murder is not escapism if it's real. And so the movie takes inter the entertainment world and then it segs into reality for these teenagers who enter the fun house thinking, oh, this is just fun and games and we're going to have sex in the fun house. And it turns out, nope, they're going to deal with reality as it is and a horrible reality, the awfulness of reality. In typical Hitchcock and other kinds of conspiracy and paranoia stuff, the, the teenagers are peepers at first. They peep into a you know, almost a nude show at the carnival, which they're not allowed into, so they can see the forbidden things within. Then they do that later on in the movie, but peering into the forbidden things, it's a classic curiosity narrative in which, you know, if you're too curious, curiosity kills the cat, as the ridiculous saying goes, but you can get killed by your curiosity. Your forbidden lusts take over. You want to know more about what's behind the curtain. No, you really don't. And so the kids discover that as the movie goes along. Thus, one could read this movie as moralistic as a lot of these teen horror things have been, the kids are off to go have sex in the woods and, and lying to their parents about where they are. Oops, then they get hurt, harmed, or killed during the course of the movie. That is part of this movie's aura. But to me, what's at the heart of the movie, and this is a little bit of a spoiler alert, so watch out, just go watch the movie if you want to, but the thing that they're encountering is nature and actually warped, deformed, even nasty nature. And I find this movie is in the vein of, one, the movie Alien, which does very similar things with its ending, and this movie's ending have a lot of overlapping elements, in my opinion, where nature and the brutal, you know, nasty nature that's coming at you, which you ignored or didn't care about, or you laughed at early in the movie, you now are getting it coming at you and nearly killing you. But even more than that, another prior movie, and both Alien and The Elephant Man, as I'm going to mention, are prior movies. The Elephant Man released one year before The Fun House. Is, the Elephant Man is a freak in a circus, and then he's brought out, and then he's redeemed in the movie as a real, living, breathing human being who's dignified and needs honor and respect. That's a classic monster with a heart movie. Well, this movie inverts the Elephant Man. I don't know if it's directly arguing with it, with it or not, but the Frankenstein is an image that comes up throughout the entire movie. And then the character wears a Frankenstein mask. What's behind that Frankenstein mask is an Elephant Man-like figure. 
But this figure does not turn out to be so nice, so kind, so caring, so lovable, so intelligent as David Lynch is the Elephant Man. That to me means it's arguing with the Elephant Man. The monster with a heart of gold is, well, the, uh, this is the inverse of that. <laughs> and everyone's a monster at heart as it turns out. And the reason why I bring up Ray Bradbury, something wicked this way comes, you know, they have the, the kids, the boys who are discovering this awfulness, this horror, horror maybe even Satanism at this carnival. Well, the movie's POV shot at the opening puts us in the perspective of a teenage, a young teenage boy, and then he follows the older teens to go out to the carnival, as he shouldn't. He gets his comeuppance later in the movie, but we, the audience, become him, the young teenage boy, and the eyes for, okay, there's an entertainment veneer over everything, but behind that entertainment veneer is something more horrible, a truth that's more horrible than we wish to know. Then you get this character with the Frankenstein mask, and Frankenstein's a fun movie monster if we look at it just entertainment, but behind the mask is what exactly? Horrors, terrors, the all kinds of things that could be possible in interpreting the Frankenstein story with either the monster himself or the science that creates the monster. And that's in the tradition, I think, of dark romanticism. What terrors lie within? Do you really want to look within uh, underneath the mask? I find this movie counters, the way I'm watching it, a lot of postmodernism, which uses all kinds of horror movie tropes and then considers them to be merely entertaining, to be superficial, to be false, to be an unreality. This movie, to me, as I watch it, is like, there is a horror reality behind many things. Beware, watch out for them, even if things look very kind and pleasant on the surface, or as it turns out, fun and entertaining in the case of this carnival. Now, maybe I am overrating this movie. Maybe it's just a teen horror flick, but I think Hooper's direction is quite good. There's a number of great looking shots in this movie. In the middle of the movie, he puts this very long crane shot and looks out over the whole carnival to get us, I think, to consider sort of a bird's eye or God's eye view. And that is, in fact, the last shot in the movie is a repeat of that crane shot. I think he's thinking more very carefully about what kinds of shots he's putting in the movie, the viewer perspective on things and how we should be reflecting on the ongoings of this movie. In other words, I think this is sort of a reflective philosophical philosophical movie in the disguise of a teen horror flick. So what lies behind the teen horror flick veneer and the marketing of this movie is something a little bit more considerate. And that's partly why I like this movie is it gets me to think a little bit about why the shots are the way they are and what this story is trying to tell us. Therefore, I don't think of this movie as just entertaining. I think it's thought provoking and interesting. And maybe I'm wrong, but let me know in the comments. What do you think of the fun house? Why, how do you watch it? Why do you watch it? Let us know and please subscribe to this channel for more great content. Thank you. Have a great day.